color. Mr. Chairman, I think you're on mute. Oh, I am on mute. And the chair now recognizes the general lady from California, Ms. Marigon, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for holding this important hearing on pipeline reliability and for your work to elevate this issue. In the last year, we have seen the consequences of our country's dependence on fossil fuels from the gas supply issues during the Texas winter storm power outages to the hacking of the colonial pipeline that threatened the energy supply of parts of the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. America needs to aggressively transition all fossil fuels to clean energy for our climate, environmental justice, and our energy security. But while we work to reduce our dependence, residents and businesses can't afford the severe disruptions that can come with pipeline breaks, leaks, and cyber attacks. These disruptions also pose threats to workers um, in our, to our environment and our national security. We need improved reliability, safety, and environmental standards for our pipelines and accountability for when they are not followed. My first question um, is for you, Deputy Secretary Turk. In October of last year, there was a major oil spill caused by the rupture of an underwater pipeline four and a half miles off the coast of Long Beach near my district. While the investigation is still ongoing, indications are a ship anchor disrupted the pipeline months before the spill was detected, and the leak could have been ongoing long before it was detected. It is also important to have reliability standards for offshore energy pipelines. Is that accurate? And how does your department work with the Department of Interior which has primary jurisdiction over offline pipelines to ensure energy security and environmental hazards such as leaks or breaks can be detected. Well, Congresswoman, let me just completely agree with you that we've got to go very, very ambitiously and aggressively on a full diverse range of clean energy sources, uh, good for our climate, good for affordability, good for resiliency and reliability. And at the same time, make sure that our existing energy infrastructure is secure, is safe, is reliable. Uh, we work hand in hand with the Department of Interior, not just on the uh, underwater pipeline issue, but uh, a variety of other key issues as well. And whether it's uh, underwater pipeline or pipeline on land, certainly from our perspective, we need to have a minimum set of standards uh, to make sure that uh, all of our populations across the country, including those on the coast like yours in California, are protected. Okay, are there any adequate federal standards in place to secure uh, offshore energy infrastructure from hazards such as leaks or breaks in offshore pipelines that can devastate the environment? So the chairman should certainly come in here as well. My understanding is there is some regulatory, at least on the safety side. I think FIMSA has some coverage, but maybe it's uh, in tandem with some other parts of Interior as well on this uh, particular issue. But again, this is one thing that's come up again and again on this hearing is uh, avoiding a patchwork and making sure that we've got coherence. And what we focus on from the Department of Energy side of things is making sure we've got coherence across energy systems and across uh, the whole parts of uh, energy systems in particular. And uh, we just need to make sure that that's, uh, that's the case for any infrastructure related to energy from our perspective. But Chairman, if you'd like to comment further on the existing authorities. Thank you, Deputy Secretary. Just, just quickly, uh, Congresswoman, I, I, I do believe um, that the, the that FEMSA has a responsibility, but also the Interior Department shares responsibility with FEMSA over the safety of those particular facilities. Right. Well, thank you, at least thank you for working for with the Department of Interior. To, I, I believe it's important we have reliability standards, so regardless of where the pipelines are, underwater or above ground. Uh, Deputy Secretary Turk, how vulnerable are offshore oil? rigs to cyber attack and what can be done at a federal level to improve the security of their computer systems? So from our perspective, what we see in classified setting in the public reporting is there's a variety of threats, uh, criminal gangs, ransomware, uh, and state actors as well uh, across key parts of our energy infrastructure. And so offshore rigs are certainly part of the critical part of our key energy infrastructure as it currently exists, and we need to make sure they're safe, just like pipelines are safe, just like electricity is safe. So we can't have any weak links. 
Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Glick, uh, I'm out of time, but what I'm going to do is submit my question on methane leaks uh, from natural gas infrastructure to you, and uh, and uh, we'll look forward to getting a response to that. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Joe Lane, U.S. Bank. The Chairman now recognizes the General Lady from Delaware, Ms. Blunt, Rochester. Oh, wait, wait, no, I, I see uh, 